so I'm gonna go ahead and get Prospector here. And I, I love my round pins. You see how this, this handle just kind of slips right through here? It's so cool. People ask me about my round pins all the time. This is a Seven Peaks round pin. They do amazing work, incredible craftsmanship. One of the things I love about this round pin is look at how tall it is. Like it's so tall all the way around. I get a lot of different types of horses, whether I get wild horses or horses that have come from uncertain past. And some of those horses are a little bit scared of things. And if you put too much pressure on them, they might go over the top, not with a round pin like this, because it's so tall, no horse is getting over it. So come on in. I wanna show you guys kind of what I'm gonna be working on with Prospector today. I know, I know I'm gonna show you Prospector here, but I gotta talk about these gates. <laughs> come take a look at this. I love these gates because look at how wide this gate is, right? So it's really cool. We can take one of the four wheelers with the drag in here and drag the round pin. Um, we have track loaders and skid steers too. They can come in here, drag the round pin. There's so much room that as wide as this gate swings, you don't have to worry about being able to get a horse in here. Because with other round pins, you know, you might be pulling your horse in and the gate's like slamming up against them or they're hitting the sides. But I mean, look at how much room there is for a horse to get through there. It's also really cool because I ride in my round pins too is this is so perfect for teaching a horse to open and close a gate like at the side pass. So I can bring my horse right up to here. I can reach down, hold the gate, and I can work on pushing the gate out or check it out, bringing the gate <laughs> right in. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and catch Prospector here. And whenever I catch a horse, I wanna get their attention first. So you see how like he's eating, he's not really paying attention to me. I mean, look, he's really, really all about that grass there. There, and when he does pull his head up, he's back to the grass. I'm gonna go ahead and take the pressure away. A lot of people make the mistake here of thinking, oh, I wanna catch my horse. If I apply too much pressure, my horse is going to run away from me, okay? And he did, but I much rather him be attentive than him not pay attention to me and stand still. Okay, so as long as he's not preoccupied with the grass, he's fine. But there, the moment that his head starts to lower and go back to that grass, I'm gonna apply pressure to him. Now, if he connects with me, and I'm gonna see if I can connect with him, there, I'll kind of lower and release some pressure here. Because I don't wanna just go up and catch him. I wanna get him to draw in and connect with me. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of pressure. I'm just gonna shoot him around the sides of the round pin here if I need to. But I'm gonna give him a chance to connect there. I'll kind of lower my hand. A lot of people will make the mistake when they wanna catch a horse, they wanna go up and say, whoa, ho, stop, pony, and get that horse to stop, and then go up, right? Does this look familiar? This is how a lot of people would go, and then they go and catch their horse. It's not that I can't catch this horse. I wanna make sure that I can do a better job of him connecting with me where he comes to me as opposed to me catching him. So I'm gonna push him off here. I'll get him trotting on the rail of the round pin here. Good boy, see how he's kind of softening in towards my direction, I like that. I'm gonna give him a chance to come in. Uh, oh, look at that. You see the difference there? Where he stops, he connects with me, and then he comes in. And so now I'm like, okay, now I'll go ahead and I'll catch you because he's chosen me, right? When he chooses me, it's so much more meaningful.